of Doki Doki Blue Skies. It's been so long, <laughs> and by so long I mean it's been 20 minutes since I recorded the last episode. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, in the last episode we had quite an eventful time. It was right after the January exams, all that fun stuff. But now we're hopping in, and in the last episode we ended off by asking Sari to go to therapy. So, let's continue. Before I know it, the weekend has already arrived. It's been a few days since Siri agreed to try therapy. The slight notes from me, she spoke to her doctor, managed to arrange her first therapy session tomorrow. The reason I am such a PCB response, I'm still fairly apprehensive. Seeing how persuasive her condition is, interfering with her ability to get homework done, twisting her self perception, it's a bit daunting, I can't lie. I guess just seeing how serious depression is, is and has been is a shock. Oh god, there's so many typos. I've had Godzilla read this and had a stroke and fucking died. To see how serious depression is has been a shock to my system. There's no comma there. A part of me does worry that somehow me getting involved is actually a bad thing. Perhaps I'm somehow making it more complicated. I don't really know what I'm getting into here. No. I don't listen to that silly irrational side. Look at the positive. She agreed to get some help. This is the first step to recovery. Yes, that's true. Plus, I'm going with her, so at least we're making this step together, right? It should be fine. Ah, uh, being a chronic over-warrior truly is a curse. The atmosphere makes me happy. It's best to focus on that and stop worrying about what could go wrong. If I constantly focus on the negatives, well, that's not good for anyone. Stay positive, optimistic. Stay positive, optimist, optimistic outlook. Ryan, optimistic outlook. It's clear my morning routine. I find myself at my kitchen, aimlessly wonder, wondering about how to spend the day. One of the drawbacks of your first relationship is that you don't really know what, what you're meant to do with your partner. It's too cold to spend much time outdoors, so we're going to the indoors. So I can watch 10.14 a.m. Pretty early, so we wouldn't be awake yet. And the gates idly settles on the used plates in front of me, and an idea hits me. Ooh, Sarah would love this. About a half hour later, my work is done and carefully placed into a bag. I take her over to her room, hoping that she's still asleep. So I was hoping she's fast asleep, no surprise. I'm not even given, not even given, it's, given it's not even 11 yet. As I approach her, I'm sure how cute she looks when she's sleeping. Wait, that didn't sound super creepy, did it? I eventually catch myself, stop being so weird. But the way she's curled, but the way she's curled up in a ball, even with her hair being a mess, it's like trickle of drool leaking from her mouth. She's perfect. If there's any way this girl could look any less beautiful. I like sound of her snoring, turn my light smile into a heartfelt grin. Sitting down my bag, I quietly walk over to her and gently brush the light hair that's falling into her open mouth. Her side of my hand brushes against her forehead. Wakey, wakey, sleepyhead. Uh, five more minutes. Made you breakfast. She gravely sits up and rubs her eyes, hugging the blanket closer to her. You didn't have to. You know, I feel disappointed. I'm slightly irritated by her reaction, but, her, but I was really looking forward to seeing how like, super in she'd be. What time is it? Uh, like 11? Alright, she puts the covers off and sits up. She still, look, still, she still looks quite tired. She usually opens the bag and forces a smile on her face. You can thank your dear sunshine poem for inspiration, especially that last time. Sorry, I'm so selfish. I'm such a thoughtful boyfriend who's been super considerate and made me breakfast in bed, and I can't even thank you properly. You went through all of this just for me. Anyone else would be really appreciative, yet here I am complaining that you're here. Huh? No, it's not like that at all. Yeah, I was hoping you'd be a little bit happier to see me, but... Well, it's kind of me forgetting how difficult morning is going to be for you. Don't worry about it. I tell my words haven't convinced her in the slightest, and I don't get the feeling that you don't want me here. Relax. She slowly starts chewing on the food. This is really good. It's pretty basic stuff, to be honest. But I'm glad you like it. This week he's cooking has something on me, as you can see. How does he make me laugh, even when it's the last thing I want to do? Magic, I think. Maybe, it's, maybe I was a comedian in my last life. It's a question that science has been trying to answer for the past hundred years, hundred or so years. <laughs> By the way, can I just have a lazy day today? I don't really feel like going outside or anything. Fine by me. After she finished eating, we made our way back to mine. We pretty much resumed our standard activity of cuddling on the sofa. Maybe even my earlier worries were un unfounded after all. We're both content in just being each other's presence, regardless of the activity. I'm aimlessly flickering through the movie channel and TV. I whip up my phone. Hi, Ryan. What's up? Ah, uh, not much. You were curious on time, but she's taking an awful long time to reply. Even though she's plucking up the courage to ask me something. Well, I was wondering. Go on. Would you like to discuss the book with me today? Uh, I haven't read much of it, to be honest. I think the movie version is on Netflix, though. Hang on, let me check. What's up? Oh, you know the book you're in, let me. I'm checking to see if it's on Netflix. We're gonna have a horror night? 
I told Yuri I'd let her know my thoughts on the book with her, but I really haven't read enough of it really to discuss. We found it on Netflix, and I thought we could all watch together instead. Oh, here it is. Oh. Are you okay with it? Of course. We can have a friend if I stop performing over there. Other people are out there, out there having the tough times, too. This is her chance to the television. I'll win and smile on her face. Okay, I figured that you were here, too. If you were here, too... Okay, I figured that if you were here too, you wouldn't feel like I don't know. I was, I don't know, leaving you out or anything. It's fine. Dear God, that clown looks even uglier on the big screen. I never liked clowns. Anyways, I found it. You can come over. So you're here too, by the way. Are you sure? That wouldn't be up interrupting anything? Nah, she says she's fine with it. It's all good. Six later, Andrew is outside my door, book in hand. Hey, Eric, come on in. Siri's in the living room. Good afternoon. Thanks for searching this, by the way. I haven't seen the movie version yet. And neither have I. It should be interesting. Hey, Yuri. Yuri smiles in greeting. I've heard good things about the film adaptation, so I'm hopeful that this will be enjoyable. Only one way to find out. I'm curious to see. It's probably the new version. Well, I guess we'll find out, maybe. I have to take this serious and massive chicken, jump in and every loud noise, it's such a suspenseful scene. Yuri, on the other hand, Yuri seems totally engrossed in the movie, never once looking away during an ominous, ominous scene. For the most part, it's simple to read her face as she remains fairly impassive. Though a look of wonder and interest occasionally flickers across her face, especially when the monster's on screen. It's definitely one of the better horror movies I've watched. Granted, that isn't saying much, as I haven't seen too many. I have to admit, the acting in this film really sells it. Both the clown and the young kids serve as protagonists are all brought to life really well. It's the second one. It's the second one. Yep, it's the second one right there. It's the second one. Oh no, please tell me they're going to win that creepy building. Why did you come in there? It's just like a nightmare waiting to happen. She just behind a cushion, only peering out intermittently, something she took to do once the clown was first introduced. I laugh and pull her clothes. She cuddles into my shoulder, turning her face as she could still see. Before my eye catch Yuri quickly throwing us a glance. From my periphery vision started to tell, but she looks a little sad. I grin so clearly I forgot how nice Yuri feels at home. Watching Yuri and I call is probably a painful reminder. But that serious prediction about how Yuri feels about me is true. Now we're the movie's over. It's just been really interesting to hear Yuri's thoughts, not just on the movie, but on the horror genre on a whole. That's the thing I admire about both the book and the movie, how both approach the present and main theme of fear. A lot of film adaptations of the books tend to over the content, and many horror movies rely on the cheap jump scares to elicit a reaction. Of course, there's nothing inherently wrong with a jump scare, but I find the best horror movies tend to get under your skin and make you think. Well, after you finished. Yeah, I agree. Jump scares just annoy me, really. They start you, and sure, they build, they can, the build, the, yeah, they startle you, sure, and the build-up can be tense. From what I've seen, horror movies just make it really obvious when one's coming up. The music is really qu quiet or really spooky. It carries in a dark place, indeed. So it's quite co the common occurrence with modern horror. There's not much left in to your imagination. You can't help but notice that Siri's been very quiet throughout the discussion Yuri and I are having. You okay, Siri? Hmm? I don't really have much to say. You two carry on. I'm fine. He looks absentmindedly at the screen. Fortunately, the second part of the movie isn't out yet. Yep. Like being only able to read half of the book. The second part is about how the characters come back to fight the clown when they're adults, right? Indeed. And that's where the plot really shines. But I have some errands to be getting on with, so I'm going to have to leave. Thank you both, by the way. I really appreciate it. That's okay, Yuri. I hope you're feeling better. Yuri turns to me. Oh, did you tell her? Face grew as hot. In my haste to reassure Siri that nothing was going on between Yuri and I, I forgot that Yuri's confession was likely confidential. Oh, damn. Yeah, I did. S sorry, Yuri. I didn't think... I didn't realize it was private. It's okay. I suppose it's only fair that there's clarity between two people in a relationship. Phew, I'm glad that Yuri is so understanding. Well, anyway, I'll see you two on Monday. Goodbye. See ya. Bye, Yuri. Yuri leans a turn to Siri. It's looking a, a little rueful. Hope you're alright about therapy, Ryan. I'm dreading tomorrow. It's gonna be just fine, don't worry. I hope so. I should probably get going as well. I'll see you tomorrow. With a wave, she departs as well. Therapy! Couples therapy. That's what we're having! It'll be very, very useful. <laughs> Just saying. My eyes are but I can't but feel nervous about how today will go. I can only imagine how nervous Sayori is. It's such a big step for her, too. I just hope it goes well. Hey, Sayori, ready to get going? Yeah, she's a little quiet, and not quite as shiver as she usually is. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Oh, fuck, that came out of nowhere. Anyway, yeah, it's only a short walk away. Well, that was interesting. Our therapist is incredibly patient and empathetic, never once being insensitive to this question. Spent the majority of the session getting a picture of her current life situation. But Sarah was generally compliant. I think that after she told me about depression, it might have become a little easier to talk about given I was first person she could pass to. She looked entirely comfortable, but after a few reassuring smiles from me, she was able to answer these questions. The uh, hazard passed by relatively quickly, and before we knew it, it was already over. Sarah is quiet as she breaks the silence. Beautiful horror stories about about people who get really insensitive therapists. I was really scared that he'd be, be one of them. But he was really patient, so that could have gone a lot worse. He shows off in the silence. I'm really proud of you, Sari. I know that must have been really hard for you to do. What with how confusing all this can be. It really does make me happy that you're doing this. I'm glad to hear that, Ryan. I really am. By the way, can we spend the rest of the day together? I don't want to go home just yet. Of course I can't. Calling off the couch it is. Swinging by the shops to get some snacks, we found ourselves back in our typical cutting spot. Very quiet between us. A given, I suppose, after therapy session. There's a lot to take in for both of us. Ugh. Ugh. Tagging along to the session raised so many questions in my mind. Though now isn't the best time to ask him, though. Hey, Sayori? Yeah? Why don't we play something? We don't have enough people for a board game, though. Nah, I don't mean board games. Remember we used to play video games together when we were kids? Always some video games were a really good way to escape reality. Last year, when I was really lonely, I found it helped to take my mind off things, especially... Plus, there's some games... There are some games I have I have I think you might enjoy. She sits up. So if that can be fun, what games are you thinking of? It turns out I saw some of those games you played. Do you remember Banjo Kazooie? Oh, the one with the bear? Uh huh, yep, that's the one. Let's give it a whirl. I was hoping gaming is for maybe a wonderful way to get her mind off the therapy. She truly lost a couple of of world, her face drenched up with scrunched up with determination. At first she wasn't very good at the game, struggling with the controls, getting lost and generally unsure of what she's meant to do. So after a few pointers from me, she really started to pick it up. We would soon get a hang of it. So you're going to be really good at things that she puts her mind to it. It's almost uncanny how skilled she can be, especially as it contrasts the airheaded vibe she can give off. Aha! I knew I'd find a jigsaw piece there. I laughed. She's having a great time, and it's heartwarming to see her so happy, even if it's over just over a video game. Nothing will ever beat Sayori seeing Sayori smiling. You'll never notice how cute you are, Sayori. Huh? Just seeing you happy makes me so happy. I swear that nothing will ever change that. Aww. Not to complaining or anything, but where did all this come from? Truth be told, I'm not really sure. Being with her in the therapy room just now was quite eye-opening for me. But not just because I got to see how therapy works, but because... Well, because it's really dawning on me that she has depression. That's something that we can't deal with alone. Of course, I would meet her when she said she was depressed back in November, but... The meeting the therapist and watching him do his job really drove the point home. I'm also really glad it's, she's seeing help, but it made me think. She's been depressed for a long time, only recently came back into her life. What was life like for her while we weren't friends? Probably awful and super lonely. Ryan? Are you there? You're looking kind of sad. What's up? Bright smile does nothing for my guilt. I'm sorry, Siri. What are you sorry for, silly? Well, you probably got to hang out not too long ago, right? Since September? Yeah? It bothers the game, it's such a control death, it's an urgency in the situation. And you've been depressed for so many years. But I wasn't there for you. Just in part, all because, because, because of what? If I was an idiot who prioritized gaming and anime over you, I can't imagine how hard things to do when for you when we weren't ta really talking. Ryan, none of that is your fault. She gently takes my hand in hers. Part of me thinks that well, I had made more of an effort with you back then. Perhaps your uh, your part didn't cause you to be depressed, Ryan. Truth, I don't really know why I developed my depression. There's a lot I don't know about my condition. But I know one thing I know is that it really doesn't need a reason. That's what my doctor said the last time that's what my doctor said the last time I tried therapy. Please, don't you ever think somehow you somehow contributed to my direction, okay? You're like the polar opposite. When I'm with you I'm happy. You make me feel like I'm actually worth something. Even when my brain tries really hard to tell me that you're lying. Yeah, but that's in the present. What about in the past, when there were years we didn't hang out at all? I actually had the conversation with Monka once. <laughs> it's normal for friends to do like that, I think. You can go a long time without talking to someone, but if you ever reconnect with them and you can both get along after nothing ever happened, did anything really change? 
Pause upon hearing your words. I guess she has a point, but I find it hard to internalize. She's forward and strokes my face, turns on my chin up so we made eye contact. The way I see it, we get just as long, just as along just as well now as we did when we were as kids. Besides, what happened in the past was the past. If anything, the time apart made me appreciate the time I do spend with you even more. I'm glad you feel that way, Siri. I really am. It's just, well, you going to therapy today made me realize that the reality of depression. And maybe you reflect on how much I've been absent in your life. Oh, yeah, I didn't mean to spring this on you out of the blue like that. Especially when you want to take your mind off therapy. It was pretty inconsiderate of me. It's okay, it really is. I'm just glad we can all talk these... I'm just glad we can talk these things out, you know? I'm really patient with me, so it's the least I can do for you. I'd much rather we talk about whatever bothers you than you bottling it up. After all, those bottles are meant to be shared, right? Can I put laugh? That was clever. <laughs> if you say so. I do. This Ryan, don't blame yourself for anything, okay? I'm much happier ever since you came back to my life. I wouldn't have been able to go to therapy if you weren't with me. And like you said, well, I agree. It is a big step to take. So far away looking around, she ponders her next words. I've gone so many years thinking that was something I'd have to bear alone. But I have to admit that it's nice to have to go through this by myself. She squeezes my hands. Besides, we can't really change the past, can we? Yeah, I guess you're right. You do have such a big heart, you know that? Nothing ever changes with you. That's never going to change. Someone like these that really bring a warm, fuzzy feeling inside of me. I've never felt anything like this before. Because it feels so... Right. Now, do we have some jigsaws to collect? Of course, let's get back to the game now. She used to think it's all starts playing once more. In the seconds, we're whisked away back into the world of childhood memories. The over warmth of my arm, the sound of her innocent laughter, and the smell of her hair. The little voice of Gil remains, but it's now easier to ignore it. Wow, it's super late already. Tomorrow's a school day as well. How fun. Tell me about it. Monday mornings are the absolute worst. I even Sakura I could save them. I just want another break. You just had a Christmas one. I know, I know. Oh well. Anyway, I should get going. Oh, leaving so soon? I tried to pull my puppy dog's eyes, cause her to laugh and shake her head. But it's late. Each phone and pull her into an embrace. In a playful attempt to stop her from leaving, I push her back on us to wrap her arms tightly around my body. Why, wow, you're falling into my grand trap. Now there's no escape. Ah, you've caught me. Whatever can I do? Nothing. My mastermind plan is absolutely foolproof. Is it say already proof? Hmm, what are you? Her lips meet mine and immediately I'm taken away into another world. Man, it's almost scary how powerful the sensation is whenever we kiss. Oh, fair. Are you complaining? If you prefer, I could just... Her tone is innocent and playful. Not kiss you again. Hey, I didn't say that. Okay, okay. You win. There's one thing you didn't prepare for. Oh, and what could that be? Boogie Booper on the nose. Boop. Ah! Surprise Sneaky Boops aren't allowed. Oh, but surprise Sneaky Kisses are. You had me trapped. It was just self-defense. <laughs> so was my boop. This isn't over, meanie. Looking forward to our rematch, then. I reach over and check my phone. It's almost midnight. As far as I hate to admit it, we probably should call it a day. Although, having said that, an idea just popped in my mind. Okay, Siri. How about... Fuck! I pressed the wrong one! <laughs> Shit! You know what? No. I am going to... Nope. Nope. Hold on. Hold on. I'll be back. I'm going to get to the right question. I only now realize I never saved. So, uh... I had to go through a lot. <laughs> I basically had to go through the entire last episode and this one again. So let's just hop back into it and I'll pick the correct answer. And just in case, I'm saving now. <laughs> Um, why don't you stay tonight? Eh? Here? Oh, we can also make breakfast tomorrow morning before school. Oh, I didn't think of that. Where will we sleep, though? Last thing, I can take the sofa and you can have my bed. 
No, uh, there's no way I'm, I'm letting that happen. You can sleep with me. It's not going to sound for a second. I mean, it's only comical by the fact that Sarah really hasn't realized the implication of her words. Uh. Oh. Sorry. I didn't mean it like that. You know what I meant. Anyway. I'm just going to get my stuff from my place. I'll be back in a second. All right. After completing my bedtime preparation, I really slide into bed thinking about the conversation that took place today. It's been a lot to take in, I suppose. Ever since Zora became my girlfriend, there's always been a nagging fear that I'm getting into something that's way beyond my way beyond me. Going to therapy has helped dispel that worry, though. Today was relatively smooth, and I'm hoping that doesn't change. Faintly, I hear the click of the front door, followed by footsteps. I'm just going to get changed, then I'll join you. Zora approaches the bed. I can't help but notice how nice her legs look in those shorts. Would you be cold in those pajamas? Nope. I have you to warm me up, remember? Suddenly very grateful that I have the blanket covering my body. She slides in next to me, pulling the blanket over herself. Slowly she inches over to me and positions herself so the top of her head lies just below my chin. As I grin in my chest, she looks up at me, moves in for a quick kiss and giggles. At such proximity, I can hear her heartbeat. Her hands feel soft and warm against the fabric of my shirt. It's incredibly warm, but isn't overbearing in the slightest. I didn't think I wrap my arm around her body and rest my face atop her hair. Good night, Sayori. Plant a kiss on her forehead. Good night. Cuddles. Happy cuddles. Happy sleepy time cuddles. Suddenly, I'm pulled out of my sleep, but what appears to be sobbing. As I slowly fight the grogginess, I'm also aware of a slight dampness on my chest. I hate when Siri has a nightmare. The feeling of powerlessness, the sound of her tears, the look of anguish on her face, it always hits hard. Why can't you hear me? I need you. Come back. Please come back. Siri? I gently shake her. Shh, Sarah, it's okay. I'm here. It's okay. Although there actually carries on whimpering. She clings to me even harder, shaking with fear. I can only imagine what's going on inside her head. Home for my phone, the blinding clairs, and they tell me it's 7.01. I am? It's me, Sayori. You were just having a nightmare. Don't worry, I've got you. I stroke her hair soft, softly as her crying subsides. That was horrible. What happened? She takes a deep breath and closes herself. Everything was so dark. You, Yuri, Monica, Natsuki. You were all there. But when I tried to talk to you, it was like there was an invisible bubble around me. I don't know if you could hear me, but there was a shadowy figure that kept talking to me. Fresh tears fill her eyes once more. And I kept saying horrible, horrible things. They told me that I was useless and that everyone would be so much better off if I wasn't around. They'd be much happier with Yuri. And that therapy is pointless of just fighting a losing battle. Something more than false hope. No matter how hard I try to believe it otherwise. No matter how hard I try to believe otherwise. She sniffles. Trying out to you, the girls, to anyone. It was just me and the voice tormenting me, telling me that everything I've been trying so, trying hard, so hard not to believe. It felt so real, Ryan. So real. This night, I thought things might have had a chance of being okay again. I hate this. Why can't I just be normal? And it's already seven. Ugh. I'm sorry, Ryan. I just can't go to school today. It's okay. I won't go either. Oh, but what about? I couldn't care less about that. There's no way in hell I'm going to leave you alone after what you've just experienced. I can't miss. I can miss the all day off of school. It's fine. So I'm about to protest, but upon seeing the steely resolution on my face, she roughly abates. I'll get you some water. Be back in a second. I don't know why I'm like this, Ryan. Why is it that something as stupid as a little nightmare makes me feel this bad? Hoping that finally there was a light at the end of the tunnel. That was just naive of me, wasn't it? It's okay. You don't have to say anything. I know you might feel like you have to say some magical words to make you feel better. All you have to do is listen. Really hurt me was the voice telling me that you'd be much better off with your as your girlfriend. I'm trying to really hard to believe that I'm a girlfriend. I'm worth your time, but those doubts are always there in the back of my mind. I know you never break my trust, but I wish I could convince my stupid brain to see it the same way. And it's so unfair because I can see how hard you're trying. Please believe when I say I really appreciate you. But I'm just so scared that it might all be for nothing. 
What do you mean? What if I never get better? What if I'm always going to be like this? My pieces are all broken. You're trying so hard to put them back together, but what if you can't? What if you can't put them back together because some of them are gone? I don't have an answer for that. I hate feeling like this. Feeling like I've lost something. Something that I'll never get back. No matter how good your support or how well therapy goes. Remember the last time I wasn't so tired? That's the worst part about depression. The exhaustion never goes away. The exhaustion that sleep can never fix. The only good thing about sleep is that it's an escape from my mind. At least for a few hours. I wonder I don't have nightmares. And I'm just so tired of it all. Face slowly leaking down her face once more. Her face looks utterly resigned. I wish I could just wake up one day and actually have hope. Her face moves that smile. Her cheeks glisten with cheers. Actual, genuine hope. Hope that maybe, just maybe, things might be okay. Just when I begin to think that could be true, days like these happen. I hate these days. I hate these days so, so much. Therapy is already hard enough, and these nightmares make me feel like what little progress I've made has been reset. All of the doubts that I try so hard to keep in check break free and are merciless. I wipe away a few of her tears and gently grasp her hand in mine. We will get through this together, Sayori. Just like I said, I don't care how long it takes or what we have to endure as a promise. But I'm never going to stop until we see this through. She looks away. Why is that I never feel like I'm actually getting through to her? I have to try and stay positive for both our both of our sakes. Even though seeing her like this is one of the most demoralizing things on the planet. No matter what, we'll never be alone in dealing with this. And if these are broken, we'll create new ones. I need to double check something. Okay. I thought for a second I delete. I thought I deleted a file that I needed, but I didn't. Okay. If these are broken, we'll create new ones. I can imagine how hard it is for you. Really? Now you probably know what it's like to know how I'm feeling. Exactly, you don't. You don't know what this feels like, the constant numbness, the constant feeling that no matter what I do, the shadow will always be here. Crying myself to sleep, waking up in tears, having to fake everything because you're terrified that people will see the real you. But I've seen the real you, and you're still here, you're still trying to help. I get it. I really do. I know you're trying to help, but it's hard to see your courage as anything more than just empty words. This isn't something you can fix by saying the right stuff. She bursts into tears once more. As much as I wish it was. I scoop her into a hug, tries pushing away initially, but I hold firm, holding her close to my chest. Then she gives in and sobs unrestrainedly into my chest. I'm scared, Brian. I wish her soft finger as I gently struck back for him. I know, Sayori. I'm scared as well. We both fall silent with the only sounds for me in the room was the sound of being her, of her anguished cries. Sayori? She mumbles into my chest. I'm sorry if I say the wrong things. I just... I just don't know what the right things to say to say and do are. This whole thing is just totally alien to me. And after you told me that my words are pretty much empty, I'm starting to doubt everything. She looks at slightly as she bites her lip. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that. It came out much harsher than I intended. I want to believe what you say. I really do. Oh, excuse me. Right, that was something different. I know that I shouldn't feel jealous and I shouldn't compare myself to other girls. I want to believe all the lovely Risha things things you say to me, but I can't. I know that what you're saying makes sense, it's just internalizing is a whole other story. It's not your problem, it's all on me. Being able to get over this stupid thing. Press isn't just a stupid thing though, it is a stupid thing though. It's uh I know it's much more than that, Ryan. I can't help how angry it makes me. I just want to be normal like everyone else. It's like I'm not in control of my own body. The depression is the one that chooses my mood for the day. It chooses how I react to things and what I say. Like the day you made me breakfast. I really wish that I was appreciated from the start instead of being irritated that we were in my room so early. It's so unfair. I keep going on and on about it and 
Don't ever apologize for venting about your depression, Sayori. Then my words probably don't sound as reassuring and helpful as I want them to be. But one thing that, I'm not, that will never change will be my willingness to listen. I've been battling this alone for so long, so it's only fair that I can be a shoulder to cry on. Problem shared is a problem to have, right? Well, it's obviously not that simple in this case, but it's something. She sniffles and nods slowly. It does help at least be able to talk about it. That's something, then. Having you around as much as I don't Having you around as much as I don't think I deserve your support it does make a difference. That makes me happy, then. Really? Yeah, it might not be a huge help, but it's still some help, surely. She pauses to reflect. Yeah, I guess so. She nods and checks herself that her head lies on my lap. Once she settles, I absolutely start struggling her hair. My mom told me there would be days like these. Hmm? Well, back in no November after our fight, I, uh. I was a bit lost. I didn't know who to turn to, so I asked mom for advice. What did she say? She said that if you date someone with depression, you'll have good days, like the ones we had before, and bad days, like today, I guess. So I fall silent once more. She looks a little reflective and thankfully doesn't seem to mind that I told mom about her, con her condition. Does she have depression herself? Nope, she dated someone who had it in the blast. It's kind of spooky how accurate her advice was. What was it? So we how important it is to be patient and understanding for a start. Which you have been. And I don't know. I still have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know. Really, I don't really know if I'm saying or doing the right things. I thought... I thought I was... I thought I was, but after you told me that my words are just empty, I'm starting to doubt everything. A lot of regret flies across her face. Sorry, I didn't mean that. For what's worth, you've been a great boyfriend, Ryan. It's not fair on you. Your heart has always been in the right place, and you put up with my moods. That's reassuring to hear, at least. And all I can do in return is snap at you for the smallest of things. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Mom did warn me. Being honest with you, it's times like these that make me realize how serious depression is. But I'm glad I got the wake-up call sooner rather than later. Neither of us really know what we're doing, but at least we have each other, right? At least we have each other, right? It's also our first relationship, so we've been really fighting an uphill battle from the start. I've definitely enjoyed my time with you so far, and you think I'm a good boyfriend, so we could be doing a lot worse. I don't know, could be? I think our relationship has just been putting you putting up with me. Do we have a future together? Her words kept deep. Knowing that she has these doubts, especially this early on. What do you think? Honest question. I don't know. Do you want us to have a future together? Yes. So do I. But when, what about when we started last year in school? When we leave school, what if you go to university and I don't? What if... Sayori, listen to me. You have to stay in a relationship one day at a time, okay? Probably drive yourself crazy by trying to predict the future. Do I know if we'll be together in a year? Truthfully, I don't. I have no clue what life will be like... What will life will be like after school, but there's no point worrying about it because it doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah, you're right. Just need a short, humorless laugh. Glad that one of us that can think rationally. Now, I remember how I thought we let his fears loose in our classroom back in October? That was the polar opposite of rational. <laughs> I really enjoyed that day. It's nice to dress up and the silly costume to scare each other. A real throwback to our childhood. Definitely a highlight of the year, along with Christmas. Something really satisfying about seeing someone light up when they unwrap a present you've got them. I have the photo you gave me in my room, by the way. It always makes me smile whenever I see it. And when you're not physically around, you still make me happy. Please don't forget that. Thank you, Ryan. I'll do my best. Oh my god. I'm, I'm getting honest, this little cheery number... It's so cute, but at the same time, it's like, I know I should end the episode each time, but. It's been about two weeks since that nightmare caused Sierra to have a breakdown. By this point in our relationship, I've really started to see what mom warned me about. I didn't realize how bad the bad days would be. I've had a few therapy sessions since, and as I was hoping, as I was hoping the therapy sessions went smoothly, well, as smooth as they could go, I guess. Along with the doctor prescribing her antidepressants, the therapist has given Sierra a diary, which she's meant to use by recording her happy and sad thoughts. Recording her sad thoughts, he's working with her to ease, working with her to see whether those thoughts are supported by facts, based on trying to challenge her depressive thinking. I'm not expert, but it looks to me that 
That's the kind of therapy she needs. It's not been simple as it might seem, but it looks to me like steady, but sure, progress is being made. To say the least, it's a huge relief. She also tenderly mentioned that she'd like to start going to sessions alone, although she isn't quite at the stage yet. She said she'd see how she feels by the time the next one comes about. Still, it's been really inter interesting to see what therapy in really entails. Definitely an eye-opening experience. On the other hand, I think the other club members are starting to get a little more suspicious. The few days of su su serious oppressive mode have been a little oppressive moods have been a little more apparent in school, and they were concerned for her. Still, Siri, Siri maintained her walls. I felt bad about how in the dark the other girls were, but it is my position to say what's going on. Hopefully, Sarah will be comfortable telling them in her, in her own time. Also, given it's not February, my favorite month, I've had to pay a little more attention to school matters, namely the end of semester next month. Sakurai has also been talking to, the, talking to students about their future plans. It's scary to think that next year is my final school year. I want to see me after the lesson ends, so for what feels like the first time in forever, I've started to think about what I want to do after I leave school. And this bell rings and calls me over. You have the same look on my face when my homeroom teacher wanted to talk to me about my post-school plans. I appreciate his use of humor in the situation. He's always been efficient in helping me feel at ease, especially in situations where I feel out of my depth. If you don't know what you want to do, I wouldn't worry about it too much. After all, you just say any other so you wouldn't have another you so you do have another year to figure it out. Having said that, do you have any idea at all? To be honest with you, I haven't really given it much thought at all. Past five months have been really well. I haven't really given you much time to think about it. Well, let's try this from another angle. Does higher education interest at all? Going to interview university, perhaps be more inclined towards finding a job as soon as you leave school. Foster moved to think, trying to recollect what my parents used to tell me when I, we had this kind of conversation. University sounds good, although I'm not sure what I'd study. He nods approvingly. Don't we find it easier to land a job if you have a degree under your belt? That's good to know, then. All I have to do is pick a subject, I guess. It can be a little daunting, especially when you aren't sure. My advice would be to go with a subject you enjoy do well in. Far from me to be biased, but you are a rather, ta rather talented historian. I chuckle. What can you do with a history degree, though? The skills you get from history can you transfer to a lot of other fields. A lot of historians that I do went to journal journalism, academia, teaching, or even the law. Obviously not biased anyway, but history is the best subject to study. My science teachers say otherwise, sir. He grumbles to himself. Those haughty scientists. They could just pry themselves away from their Bunsen burners and glass vials for five minutes. Ahem. Anyway, it's good that you've got a vague idea of what you want to do. There's no rush or anything. Just take some time to think about it. Think about what you'd like to study at university. We we'll always have another discussion later. Will do, sir. Thank you. This conversation over, I made my way to the club room for lunch. Hey, guys. This is a gives you a curt smile while an arrow gives you a wan smile. The door opens once more and Yuri walks in. Siri's so weak smile wavers even further. It doesn't dislike her by any means, but it's clear that the jealousy is still an issue. So I inwardly have no clue how to resolve that issue, given I don't think Siri's willing to disclose her depression with Yuri. Following my phone, I noticed that Monica has barely greeted me. Her face is glued to her laptop with a first look on her face. Everything alright, Monica? She finally drags her, her eyes off the screen and looks at me. It seems like she was only just realized I'm talking to her. Yeah, sorry. I had to serve some important emails. How are you? Support, it's easy to spot a mile off this file for, so I decided not to push it. Not bad, not bad. Sakura was just talking about what plans are at high school. Oh, God. What the fuck happened there? Was it supposed to zoom out, zoom out, or did I miss a sentence? Okay, it was just weird and glitchy. And it's common practice all it's used to ask for students. Given we're second years, and half semester isn't so far off. Ah, but that was fun. We don't have to bother with that stuff just yet. Look, I still don't really know what I want to do. I thought I wanted to go to the user, but I can't really decide what I want to do. I'm starting to realize that I probably should have given this more thought. Absolutely irresponsible. Your future holds so much weight, and time flies by so quickly. My face heats up a little from embarrassment. She's right, of course. But it seems like her judgment is coming out of nowhere. I look at the area, half expecting her to jump to my defense. She doesn't, though. Instead, she idly pokes a spot at the table. The other girls look curiously at us. They can sense something is up. But I want to draw too much attention to Siri, so I try to deflect the curiosity. How about you, Yuri? Any ideas? I decided that I want to study Japanese literature at university. Fitting choice. Yuri smiles to herself. 
<laughs> I suppose it comes as a surprise to no one. I can imagine it'd be both exciting and daunting experience. University? Yeah, so on one hand, there's your the opportunity to meet like-minded people, all with the same passion. Yet there's so much independence, like if you opt for a university far from home. With that independence comes a lot of responsibility, and I imagine a fair degree of uncertainty. Who knows what life will be like for all of us when we've left school? I'm seeing... I don't know why, but everything looks kind of reddish for a bit, and I'm thinking I'm just going a little crazy. My question hangs in the air as the conversation lapses into silence. Monica mugs something under her breath. Is it plugged in? It is. It's just weird. Okay. Monica mugs something under her breath. How about you, Monica? I imagine you got a lot of choice given how you excel at pretty much every subject. Finally close the laptop lid with a sigh. My parents have been hounding with the exact same question for months now. Probably take over their business. There's a hint of what sounds like bitterness in her voice. Granted, I know very little about her life. Well, at least anything beyond service level, so it's a little baffling. We'll have to wait and see. An awkward silence descends upon the room. Clearly it isn't me who detected Monica's slightly hostile tone. Luckily, Yuri breaks the silence. Are you alright, Sayori? You've been rather quiet. Yeah, that's not like you at all. Even Monica went to a serious direction. Oh, I'm fine. Just kind of tired, that's all. Don't worry about me. The other girls don't look convinced in the slightest, but they don't have much chance to press her as the lunch bell rings. I remember being in their position last semester. And boy, do I not envy them. The end of the school day rolls around, I find myself wandering down the corridor waiting to see where you finish. Oh no, we're in front of Yuri's thing. On the way up, up it. Monica! Okay! Hey, Ryan. She keeps her voice slow and quickly looks around before speaking. Speaking? Speaking? Uh, a little bit of my being in from Boston came out there. <laughs> she keeps her voice slow and quickly looks around before speaking. I can tell what she's going to ask me. Is Sayori okay? She'll be fine. Just dealing with some stuff, that's all. Hmm. I heard the last time she was acting off at school, you seemed a lot less worried. That was when I knew less about her. She now has her eyes on me. I guess she what I said must have come across as pretty cryptic. Okay. Let me know if you can help in any way, okay? We? They're the club members. We're all friends after all, don't forget. Oh, of course. What a stupid question. It's appreciated. I'll see what Siri thinks. Okay, then. Well, I'll see you later. Well, I think Siri is definitely more convincing than I am. As she walks off. As her call a moment, Siri comes out of her class. Sorry I'm late. It's okay. Let's go. Do you know what was up with Monica? Funny you mention her, because she just asked me what was up with you. Oh. What did you tell her? I just see you're dealing with some stuff, didn't get any specifics. Don't worry about you, though. Have you considered telling them? Eh, no, not really. Our friend Siri. They know something is up. I know, I know. I guess that isn't a topic Siri wants to discuss any further. Anyway, no, I don't know why Monica seems so snappy at lunch. I if they're parents, they're probably being a bit overbearing. Might be difficult to maintain that model student image when you're at the top. The only place to go there from there is down. Juggling academics with sports and other extracurriculars must be really stressful. I don't know how she does it, to be honest. But it's a little sorry for Natsuki, though. The conversation kind of excluded her. Never for sure that when I was when I was a first year, post school plans hadn't even crossed my mind. Yeah, I thought that too. I'll make sure to include her next time. Good shout. Fast. I'm definitely going to think of the side I pull out my phone. I really should have talked to mom a while ago, and I'm pretty sure she was going to make me feel bad about it. Hey, mom. Ah, oh, Brian. I see to remember you have a mother. I went slightly. I knew this was coming. I know, I know. I really should have called you earlier. It's not that I didn't want to or anything. Anyway, serious with me right now. Do you want to say hello? I'd love to. Press the button on my phone, which transforms the call into a video call. I'm going to say it again. My mom is hot in this game. What the hell? <laughs> I got to be honest here. Like, if I like click here. They designed these, all the custom sprites really well. I got to give them this. All the custom sprites are really well, really well designed. I got to give the devs a lot of credit. Whether it's the sprites that were custom made for the mod or sprites that are existing in the game already and never used. 
or hell even hand drawn ones that are completely unique to the mod like that like Mom C here because that's actually her canon name is Mom C. My goodness, is that really you, Sayori? Last time I saw you, you were barely a teenager. Sayori laughs shyly. I guess I am putting her on the spot here a little. Ah, it's really nice to see you again. And you, dear. I hope Ryan has been treating you well. I should see her a desperate look. This will be a perfect opportunity to ask for adventure all the times I teased her. Of course, she's been really good to me. That's lovely to hear. Looks like my little prince has truly matured. I share a laugh as I turn slightly red from embarrassment. Mom, really? Little prince? I'm sorry, darling. I'm just so proud of you. At least you established that Sierra is going to be calling me for the next few days. I continue to giggle at my expense. He's always been like this, hasn't he? Quick to tease others, but once you do it to him, he gets all huffy. Siri, do not take our side. You're my girlfriend. She's trying and failing to keep a straight face. Okay, okay, no more teasing. Sorry, I just had to get back to you, get back get you back for not calling me for so long. How did your simulation exams go? I believe you described my results along with Sakurai's comments. That's reassuring to hear. I was worrying you how how you'd fare living by yourself, but I'm so glad to hear your academics are going well. Sakurai has a point though, your grades in math could be better, young man. Siri, you're going to have to knock him into shape. He, he's always been bad with discipline. I snort in desertion. And you're asking Siri of all people to help me with that? Hey! Mom sighs dramatically. Sorry, Siri. He can be really mean sometimes, can he? He must have gotten that from his father. There's an awkward sound. Things have been really rocky between Mom and Dad since the divorce. By the way, I've got some good news. We're almost finished dealing with this particular client. I have no one else to deal with for a week. So I'm hoping to come and see you soon. My heart raises. Much as I've loved being able to basically live with Sayori, seeing Mom again for so long would be really nice. That's awesome, Mom. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I've been meaning to ask you. How ha- She's cut short by the sound of someone calling her. It sounds pretty urgent. Ah, no. I was, having more time. I was hoping to have more. I'd have more time to talk to you. Sorry, darling. I'm going to have to go. I'll catch up properly, all three of us, when I come visit you. Don't forget, it's Valentine's Day coming up real soon. I want to hear all about how you've been treating Sayori like a princess for it. She laughs and softly waves goodbye. I forgot how nice your mom is. Yeah, she's always been a good parent. It was a, a lifesaver back in November after our fight. You're such a mommy's boy. Hey! It's a good thing. <laughs> it's really cute. I get the feeling you're mocking me, but because I know I can't win this battle, I reluctantly concede. The Ice Queen wins again. Earlier we were a clown, you know that? True, but I'm your clown. For the one from that horror movie we watched with Yuri. Such a charmer. So he passes by relatively quickly. After finishing our homework, we spent the evening kicking back with some video games. It's been a routine for a while now. Siri climbing over, we finish our homework, then relax. Or coming over. And there's a breeze. That probably got picked up on the mic of the blowing on the mic. I apologize. It's simple but effective. I'm glad that we're both happy just to sit back and relax in each other's company. Then again, Siri has never been a high maintenance kind of girl. Watching her now with her scabbled narrative concentration. God, I love her. Is now the right time to say it, though? We just didn't feel the same way. That'd be a little awkward to say the least. <laughs> nah, now's the time. I was curious, Sari. What do you want to do after you finish school? You didn't say anything at lunch. I don't really know. She sighs. Though I was going to ther I thought that going to therapy might be a good idea, but no, forget it. That's a stupid idea. No, that's not stupid at all. It is. I don't know if I'd even been any good at it. I can't even help myself, so how can I help others? If you're good at keeping the spirits high in the club, at least. People appreciate having you around. It's definitely more comfortable atmosphere when you're there. It's one thing to keep peace in a, in a high school club. Helping people with really big problems as a therapist. You know, the really horrible things that people have to live with. It's a whole other story. Mention to your teacher, at least. They might be able to point you in the right direction. He shrugs nonchalantly. I have it, no. Truthfully, I haven't thought about the future much. But at least we're alike in that sense. Although our reasoning for it is rather different. We've got plenty of time, though, right? Yeah, I guess we do. The conversation tails off the silence. I suppose thinking about the future is quite difficult for Siri, so I make a mental note not to push it. Anyway, it's getting late. Let's call it a night. Can I be the big spoon tonight? Not try that work, but sure. Well, on that note, I'm going to end the episode off because I'm going to go on. <laughs> I'm going to quickly just bring this out over here and put it there. But I'm actually going to save the game. This time, because I didn't save it last time, and I 
regretted it, so save. Yes. All right. With that, I'm going to end off the episode. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more feed, be sure to subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss any of videos. But most importantly, follow the streets down in the description below to keep up with everything that I do. I'm getting better at doing that really fast. I hate it, and at the same time, love it. Uh, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream or something to make. Have a good day, everybody.